I forgot to ask you about your your own children. Um, could you give their names and just a little my, bit about them? My daughter was um, Elizabeth Hugo now, and uh, she was born in '64. And my son, David Allen, was born in '68. And he lives in Lyria. Liz lives in the really here. Um, I didn't have I, I didn't have any other children. And are are they around quite often? Yes. My daughter takes care of me mostly. She she does my grocery shopping, she cleans my house, she does my washing, she does everything but fix my meals, and sometimes she does that too. Well now you also the girl who worked for Lucy Idol. The, the girl that used to work, who worked for Lucy Idol Center, is that your daughter's daughter? Oh, that works for Lucy Idol? Yeah. That's, uh, that's uh, Sarah, that's my granddaughter. Uh, yeah, and is that your daughter's? And I met my daughter's daughter. Okay. Now she has a daughter and a son. He has Sarah and Tony. My son has only one child, the boy, his name is Holden. I don't see him too much. His name is Valerian. Okay. Okay, now let's go on to uh, what you remember about downtown Vermilion. Do you remember any particular businesses that you especially like? Drugstore, shoe store, any? Well, one of my favorite places, like I said, was going to Spice Rich, was his Aunt Alice's gift store. She had all those little knickknacks and stuff, and uh, that's where I bought my first set of blown glass. I, uh, I, to this day, I don't know what made me get, get into interest in blowing glass stuff, but I still have the little pitcher and glasses up on my shelf up there that I bought there for since I think it's for 50 cents maybe. I used to always go shopping in there. And my other place I used to like to go was Hawkins the Force. And I would collect the cards from dolls around the world. And of course my other places were Ingle Breeze and Jumps. <coughs> and from hearts and hearts. Um, what grocery store did you go to? We went to Burke's grocery store and we went to Nigley Brothers. That was when we lived in town. But then we moved. Well, after my grandfather died, him and my grandmother were in the process of building a grocery store out of Bluebird Beach. When and when he pa he passed away, that left my grandmother without. They, he had sold the beer business, which he owned Buddy's place, and so my mother and grandmother went into business together up to Bluebird Beach. It was called the Red and White, Red and White of groceries or something like that. It was an odd name, I know that. My grandmother mostly ran the place. My mother cleaned houses. But um, we moved out there when I was in, like in the fifth grade. And uh, so we, the only time then we would, we would come into town and we'd get, um, every week we'd always come down to the newsstand and buy uh, comic books. And we always go wherever, I don't know where it was located right offhand now. Um, I'm trying to think what Cooks used to have a, a record shop. We used to buy records because my mother liked music. And we were always playing music and records and things. And, uh, was, it, was that known as Erie Electronics? Pardon? Erie Electronics? Not that, that then I don't think. Oh, that was before that. It was not yeah. Cook, but, yeah. Yeah, I cooked, um, in the I Baker Bills. 
No, I can't think of what his, I, mean, I can remember Evelyn Cook. I can't think of her husband's name on fan, but Clayton. Clayton Cook, yeah. And I don't, I don't know any other things. Well, of course, we always went to the bakery. We had to go to Swanson. And, uh, how, how about restaurants? What do you remember about restaurants? We very rarely went to restaurants. The, oh, the only restaurant I remember the most was the White Inn. Um, sometimes after my grandfather would close the beer place, sometimes we would go down to the beer, we would go to White Inn, and that's when um, Inglebury owned it. I can't, I'm trying to think what their names were. And uh, then sometimes on Sunday, if we were fortunate, we would take a wagon and go down there and get steak dinners and bring home. No fuck of a wagon. Wow. That was, that was a treat. Mm -hmm. That's when we lived down there on Liberty Avenue. Do you have any memory of church? Did you I, go to church? Uh, I went to Congregational Church. I never had any good feelings about going to church, so I don't know. I'm not a religious person. I believe in God, but it seems like I always had bad vibes. The kids made fun of me when I went to Sunday school because I couldn't read. And so I, everything was kind of, you know, shake me off and then. When I got older, I joined the uh, youth fellowship over the in our church, and uh, I did help over there with uh, Rita Parsons. She used to get me to help. Um, used to have church dinners. I don't remember what dates or they were, but she would get me to help volunteer uh, waitressing. That part I know. But I never got along with Reverend Green uh, Greenwald at all. In fact, he told me I was going to go to hell. <laughs> well, um, are there any other businesses that you would like to mention? Otherwise, uh, we'll What's just that? ask you about memories living along living. the river or like ask about the VFA. Oh, the VFW? The VFW. Oh, oh. All I know about the VFW is that they named it after my Uncle Bill. Were, were you active in being on any of their... Well, I was trying to join the auxiliary. Um, my mother was really into it. She was in the auxiliary. And the time when she was the president, my husband, David, was commander. In fact, that's how I met him. Oh. He was the VFW, well, kind of, between that and a local bar downtown. <laughs> Used to like to go to the lemon tree. Is yeah. that where you met him? Oh, that's where I met him. That's tree. where I met Rich, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I met him in the lemon tree one night. <laughs> well, and, uh, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Dick Macklin owned it. Oh. <laughs> and, well, uh, uh, do you have any other memories of what you used to do? I mean, like dances or well, like as roller a, skating? As a, little, as a little, as a child growing up there on Liberty Street, you couldn't do damn much, you know. Because you weren't allowed to do, there was no place really to go or do anything. I had a habit, I guess, of being a visitor, you might say. Uh, next door to our house there was Andrew's Insurance, and I would go over there and visit Helen Fisher. And then there were times when I would go our back of our house and bar. It uh, connected to uh, Waddy Stone's garage, and I would wander in the side door and go visit the mechanics when I was younger. I was quite a quite the visitor meeting people. Of course, I always went in the bar 
and visit with some of the gentlemen and stuff during their lunch hour thing. And uh, and I, I roller skated up and down Liberty Avenue. When I got a bicycle, I was told by Ed Benson that I couldn't ride on the sidewalk. <laughs> I never really, he always scared me. And uh, I was good friends of Leroy Coachway, who lived around the corner with his grandparents, Patty uh, and Fred Fisher who later, later on became the mayor mm -hmm. of Olympia. And uh, him and I grew up together. In fact, we graduated together. And, uh, but that was the only friend I had in the area. And a lot of times, Leroy and I would go, I don't know why we did it, but we used to get up and go along the curbs looking for money like little kids do, you know? We just would stroll around Vermillion. I, I was all over that area, Liberty, Liberty Avenue. I never went over, well, I can't say I never went over the Grand Street uh, railroad tracks, because my mother said I wandered off at one time with our dog, Peggy, and they found me on the other side. But I was quite the wanderer when I was a little kid. Do you remember anything about going to street dances? Oh yeah, we always went to the street dances. That was the big time. My aunt and uncle that lived in Cleveland, the Roms, had two sons, Wally and Dick. They would come out. Sometimes my aunt, Evelyn, and Uncle Fred that lived in Michigan would come down with their three children, Tommy, Betty, and Ruthie. And Betty and I were about I think six months apart in age, and the three of us would all, the three of us, three of us younger ones would take off and go down to the street deck and wander around, pitch pennies, throw the little hoops and stuff, and watch people dance. I don't know, I don't know what Wally and Betty did, or uh, Lucy did, they were, the, they were older, older than us. Not by much, but I don't know what they did, but that's what we, us three would do. And, uh, how, how were your aunt and uncle related? Who, who were they brothers to? Okay. My, my grandmother, Elizabeth Bond, was married twice. And she was married to a guy named Bonner or Boner, I mean, I'm not really sure how it's spelled actually. And he had Aunt, she had Aunt Evelyn and Aunt Ethel. And when she married my grandfather, Frank Bond, he never adopted them, but he considered them his daughters. In fact, my mother and my Aunt Ethel would argue about this a lot, even as adults. <laughs> and uh, that was, well, little controversy about that. Um, I have was, pictures of them, that's why I'm asking. Yeah, it's, uh, and then my Aunt Ethel married Walter Rahm, who lived in Cleveland, all his relatives lived in Cleveland. But some of our, my other relatives, my second and third cousins, the Anchorts, lived in Cleveland, in the same area. And, uh, did, did you say anger? Anchor. A N K E R T. It's, um, in fact, my great great grandmother and grandfather used to have a farm, I was told, back by the lake. You know where. I'm trying to. No. I'm trying to, what's the name, not Mill Manor. What's the name of the, um, Kingston. Kingston. The Kings, well, there used to be a road that went way back down there. And there was a farm down there. And my aunt, my great grandmother and grandfather, John and Mary Anchor, lived back there. 
Now, I'm not sure how many children they had. They had my aunt, my mother, my grandmother, and they had my Aunt Lillian. And there was Walter, and I think there was a Philip. The, um, one of the boys died or something. I, I don't know the whole story about that. She was good friends of uh, the people that owned Crystal Beach, supposedly. And um, there was this uh, lane that led back to there. And for years, you could you could see what was the remainders of the farmhouse. Which I, I did get to see it when I did live uh, in Alberta Beach, a little bit of it, but not much. I, I mean, I've been all over this, this town. <laughs> How far uh, this baby ends with, uh, what do you like about Vermillion now, or what What don't you agree with? Do you have any feelings about how Vermillion is to, today, compared to the way it used to be? I don't like Vermillion today. It's, um, they've, they've torn out all, a lot of our old buildings including the mansion, what, I mean, Wakefield's place. There's been a lot of beautiful homes that have been destroyed and removed. And um, I don't know, it just, it's not the Vermillion I know. If I had a chance probably to find another little bird like this, I'd move to it. <laughs> I liked it when it was, when, Everybody knew everybody's business, including your own, <laughs> which was true. You knew everybody uh, in town, and but now it's got now that it's supposedly a city. I I'm not real happy with it. There's too many rules or regulations, and of course, like I guess that's government, so you can't blame it onto the people. They only follow the rules, but um, no, I. Okay, so you would say you prefer the good old days to the way it is now? Oh, definitely. If I could go back into the 40s, like I was back in the 40s, I'd be very happy. <laughs> because it was, it was a nice little town. All the stores down, the shops downtown which was our darn town, <laughs> had a business in it, privately owned, I believe. And uh, I don't know, it was just- Was it true you could find everything you wanted in town? Oh, definitely. You didn't have to go shop out of town and go elsewhere to, to find anything. Like now you have to go to Timbuktu to find what you want. Then you're lucky you find it. I don't, I don't shop any place anymore. I do catalogs sometimes, but uh, no, I don't. There's nothing here in Vermillion that would really entice me to move here. <laughs> like that, that's why I tell my daughter, we would never want to come to move here and live here. It's not a quiet little town anymore. But it sure was nice way back then. Huh? Oh God, yeah. Like I said, everybody knew one another and everybody was friendly with one another and it was, it was quiet and, um, but, um, my aunt and uncle discovered, the uh, going to Kelly's Island, my aunt and uncle, uncle Wally, they introduced us to Kelly's Island and we went over there. And there's where I like, not, not now, because now it's beginning to do the same thing, commercial. But when we first started going there, um, when you go back, when you go over there, it was like you threw your watch away and you didn't care what time of day it was. And everybody knew everybody over there. 
and it was the most friendly, relaxing place there was. My husband and I had spent our honeymoon there, and everybody laughed because they thought we were crazy. It was a lovely, it was the best honeymoon I ever spent. <laughs> I, nobody, well, I shouldn't say anybody bothered us because we had friends there. We made a lot of friends, and my aunt and uncle, my uncle Wally, who lived in Cleveland for years and was a businessman, he owned um, a bright plating, retired over there, and uh, he died over there. They're buried. Him and his man Ethel are buried over there, and we go over there and put flowers on the graves and stuff. And it was, it was. That reminded me of over a million. Going back then, and I said I would. I wanted to retire there. My husband said no. He said he wouldn't go back. He would retire there, but that's where you would have liked. That's where I would have liked to retire to. Yes. He said he would become an alcoholic. I said, no, he wouldn't, but I don't know my Uncle Wally did. <laughs> but he, well, that was his, his choice and my Aunt Ethel, too. But uh, we were a drink, we were sort of a drinking family. <laughs> so, and we yeah, had fun. That's what everybody did. Yeah, we had fun. We had, we partied a lot on our family. Be like with. Well, my aunts and uncles would come, come home, I'd say, and like around, we get a time, we'll the July square dance, uh, street dances and all. You know, it was party time. And we enjoyed ourselves. And that was another thing. Everybody, I think, enjoyed itself. It wasn't wild. Only served, my, my grandfather only served beer and wine. And uh, he, he really, I guess he had one shot or something, he had to go to the Mont Elton. And that was, the, I guess, the wildest, craziest place way back then. I didn't remember hearing much about Elon uh, with Lefty Smith. But uh, I know my mother said that one time, one of the mayors, and I want to say it was a Williams, one of my grandfather did the, the liquor license. He wanted to take it away from the model and give it to him. And Pasta, no. He didn't want that riffraff in his place. He liked his beer and wine. He liked, he had a family bar. Families would come in on Saturday nights and they would fix big bowls of popcorn and the kids would dance and, and then we would just have a party. And that's how I grew up with, with people then. So, as I said, it was a, it was a nice, nice place. Well, Katie, thank you so much for being willing to share with us the good times that you had here in Cornelia. Um, before we close, is there anything else you'd like to add that maybe you just might have thought of? Or, because you, you've given us a lot of nice memory that you have. Not really. Okay. I mean, like I said, I was, I was all over a million. You asked me where I lived. Yeah. I went from Liberty Street. Well, when we moved, when I was a real little girl, there used to be a house. Our Liberty Ford is right now. A little house we lived in when I was a little little girl. I vaguely remember. Then we moved to Lorraine. And then when my mother and father got divorced, I moved in with my grandmother and grandfather on Liberty Avenue, next to the bar. Then from where we went out to Bluebird Beach to a grocery store. They came along and took away our house because they had to put the four-lane highway in. Highway. So we went to Orchard Beach then. And in the meantime, I got married for the first time, and we lived in on Grand Street, right next to the Royal News. I lived there while I was still working with my first husband, and then he went to the service, and I was I moved in a, a rented a place with some friends of ours, a Bacon, in Bluebird Beach, 
So then I went. Then I finally went back home to Orchard Beach. And then when my husband and I married David, we ended up moving into Alberta Beach. And we lived at two different homes there. And then I told when David got real ill, I did sell the house and we moved to Vermilion Lake. And then when he died, I uh, ended up selling and buying this house. And this you, port, you have lived on both ends of the middle. So you can see where I was. You, you can see where I have been all over a million. Uh huh. <laughs> I've seen every. <laughs> My best part of Vermont, that part of Vermont that I really enjoyed was beach combing. One of my favorite times living down along this, this lot of those places, not in Alberta Beach, but when I lived at Bluebird Beach what, and Orchard Beach. What did Beach. you do beach combing? What do you mean? I had her for rocks and stones and, and, and uh, shells and stuff. Oh. And that's what I did when I went to Kelly's Island. I did the same day. In fact, that's I just went through a bunch and we put it in this uh, rock garden. We're, I've, we put in the backyard now. A lot of my stone stuff. But uh, that was one of my favorite pastimes. Is just walking along and uh, picking up shells and glass and stuff that uh, people people probably think I'm crazy, but. A lot of people go to have something these days and they but I, it into a big thing. Yeah. Well, and you, you, can, you can see my house is decorated with Christmas. Uh, You're all set. It's uh, <laughs> Christmas in July? No. Christmas in Christmas. 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 It's Christmas every day here in this house. <laughs> well, I got to the point where I like I said, we were downsizing and we were going through things and I kept saying all this stuff and I'm saying, what good is it being in a box? Let's use it. Let's just enjoy it. So we got these, I got my Christmas trees that I have to be here year round. And you can see the decorations, the flowers. So I said it's Christmas every day here in my house. Shall we sing carols? No. <laughs> well, Katie, thank you. Thank you very much, Kate. We really appreciate it.